to expose the city supervisor behind this demolition. How did this rebuilt home, a showpiece of a tired old neighborhood, everything in that house is brand new from top to bottom, get demolished by a city? The big tear house down. There's nothing left. It's 95% complete. All my efforts were for nothing. It's the nicest house on the street. They could do it to anybody's house. It's scary. It's really scary. The politics of this city are absolutely ludicrous. Ludicrous. Our investigation raises serious questions about the power of a city to condemn and destroy. Just goes to show you the city can do whatever they want. It will lead to chasing down a bureaucrat. Why are you running? I thought you were a city manager. And end with a showdown. Are you trying to help this city or hurt it? What is served by knocking that home down, sir? What is served? We upheld the law. This is all that's left of the home at the center of our investigation. An empty lot now filled with dirt. The contents of the home, new lumber, new windows, new doors, all crushed and hauled away. It's not what the owner had in mind more than two and a half years ago when he paid $10,000 for a condemned, burned-out house and decided to rebuild it. It was my passion. Sean Wright saw something in the ruins, a fine old home in the shadow of the Goodyear clock tower. He was sure he could save it. It was my main goal and priority. Wright went to work immediately, cleaning out debris, replacing charred lumber. In the spring of 2002, he replaced the entire roof. He had little money, even less help. Wright did much of the work by himself. I had to basically rebuild it from the ground up. Next came wiring, plumbing, and drywall. Receipts prove Wright spent more than $30,000 on materials. After two years of steady progress, Wright was on his way to achieving his dream, a house he could call home. But Wright's dream soon turned into this, a demolition nightmare. How did this happen? Wright blames this man, Dwayne Greger, the housing administrator for Akron's health department. He pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. Why are you doing your job, Mr. Greger, at the wrong Oh. Gregor was at Wright's home on the day it was demolished. How does that make sense? I would refer any questions to our law department. I'm asking you. We filed several public records requests to find out what really happened. According to documents, the trouble started in March 2003. After a year and a half, the health department lost patience with the progress Wright was making and sent the case to the Housing Appeals Board. The Housing Appeals Board said no to demolition, convinced Wright was making progress, and granted him extensions. But on September 16th, for the first time, Wright missed a board hearing. I thought it was the 17th of every month. It was a big mistake. The board immediately issued this, a demolition order. Wright appealed, but he says he never received this, an important notice of appeal from the city. He needed it if he had any hope of winning his case. I never received that notice. The city's assistant law director, John York, states in writing he sent it. But unlike all the other correspondence from the city, which was sent certified mail, this notice was sent by regular mail. Wright lost his appeal. Now desperate, he filed an injunction. Just Two months ago, on February 25th, the case went to court again. Dwayne Greger was the only person to testify. According to the court transcript, Greger described the home as not to code and not habitable, even though Wright was not living in the home. These are pictures Greger took. He pointed out missing handrails, no hot water tank, missing furnace ductwork, and an unfinished kitchen and unfinished bathroom. And Gregor told the court the entire interior, which was under construction, was in need of a good cleaning. Wright never got a chance to speak. What would you have told the judge? It's not the way it looks here. Not at all. The most damning statement from Gregor was still to come. It is my understanding, he told the court, the rough electric inspection failed last spring and that all the drywall would have to be removed so it could be properly inspected. Was that true? No. It, I had, it, was, it had already passed inspection. The Akron Building Department's own records support that. 
Wright's house did pass every inspection, including that electrical inspection, in April 2003. You made a statement in court that was not true, sir. I repeatedly tried to talk with Gregor about his testimony. Why aren't you talking to us? Gregor's testimony was crucial. The house was now scheduled for demolition. But even as plans were being made for tearing down Wright's home, here inside the Akron Health Department, Doubts were now being raised. News Channel 5 obtained copies of internal emails as the city dealt with the demolition. At 12.45 a.m. on Monday, March 8th, Steve Nome, the inspector who spent months checking Wright's house, types an email from his home. It is obvious that considerable effort has been made, Nome writes. We can certainly be annoyed, but that annoyance does not justify the severe financial loss. I think it would be prudent to put the demolition on hold temporarily. A city site improvement officer, Kevin Willis, adds, let it stay up. There are plenty more houses out there worthy of demolition. <laughs> There's a lot of other places, a lot worse than that one. Just a few hundred feet away from where Wright's house once stood, this house is boarded up and has been vacant for years. You got this house here that needs to be torn down. This one's been empty for two years. It's Two doors down, the house has been empty for three years. In a final email, Willis asks, all this just to prove a point? Gregor responds on March 11th with a long list of minor violations and states the structure remains in a condemnable state. I tried to get some answers on the day of the demolition and even chased Gregor up seven flights of stairs. Why aren't you talking to us? Finally, after I called the mayor's office, Gregor agreed to sit down with me. Why did you run? Well, mainly because I thought I could outrun you. The tone of the interview quickly changed, starting with questions about his testimony about those electrical inspections. You were wrong. I had not been given complete information from the building department when I called them that morning. So why make that statement? Because that was my understanding. Don't you think that you had a certain level of due diligence that's required of your office? If you don't know, don't say. I was answering a question posed to me by one of our attorneys, giving her the information that I had at the time. Which was wrong. I would not agree with you. That's what you're supposed not to agree. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. You were wrong at the time. You're wrong as we sit here today. Mm -hmm. And what about those emails from his own inspector asking him to reconsider? He was stating his personal opinion. Doesn't mean anything to you? I wasn't going to use Mr. Nome's opinion to override the court order. Gregor says that he and the city followed the letter of the law, that 30 months was enough. Wright's time was up. Wright's home looked like this on the day it was knocked down. Outside, it was newly painted. Inside, it was nearly ready for him to move in. Are you going to argue with me to say the house didn't look good when you knocked it down? The house did not meet code when we knocked That's it down. That's not what I asked. Are you going to tell me that that house did not look good when you knocked it down? What, with the fresh graffiti on it? I have very little confidence in Mr. Wright was going to bring that house to a habitable condition. Very little what? Confidence. I have very little confidence in you, sir. Well, it's a good thing you don't live in Akron, then. I agree because I wouldn't want to be under your leadership. Very good. Believe it or not, the mayor of Akron defends the decision to knock down that house. I've tracked down that inspector who fought to stop the demolition. Keep watching next week. I'll have more on this story for you then. Dwayne, those internal records that you gained access to were not only key to this story, they're quite damaging in and of themselves. How did you uncover them, and how did you gain access to them legally? Public records law. Thank God for public records law. Open records in Ohio. Submit a request. They get it to you, and you can take and, a look and see what the truth and is. And the mayor continues to stand behind this fellow. So far. Just amazing. Thanks, Dwayne. Dwayne, thank you. Expressing complete outrage. Tonight, Chief Investigator Dwayne Pullman takes the case to Akron's mayor. Dwayne. This was a surprising interview. If you think the mayor of Akron is upset about that demolition... Think again. We have some power to go knock down houses. I mean like that. <laughs> we took 30 months. We went to two different courts. 
Akron Mayor Don Pasquale defends his city's decision to demolish Sean Wright's home. This is what the home looked like when Wright bought it. This is what it looked like the day the city knocked it down. They knocked out, perfectly cut out. Neighbors say it was the nicest on the block. I mean, it was a beautiful house. <laughs> here, I tell you what, I don't want to ambush you, but here, here it is. There it is. Now, you, you sell that one to your listeners. The mayor held up this blown up picture of the house to demonstrate it was still an eyesore just weeks before the demolition. I questioned the mayor about that date on the photo. Turns out the date was right, but the mayor did not like the question. Here, does that help you? Here, what difference would it make if any day out of your life, if you live next door and you had to look at that, what difference would the date make? But the mayor failed to point out some things about this eyesore, so I will. Come on down here. This is a brand new foundation. The owner spent thousands on this alone. Up here, look at that, that's brand new cedar siding. And up here where you can't see, that's a brand new roof. And underneath all of these boards, brand new windows. By the way, the boards are there because the city inspector said, put them on to make your house more secure before you move in. New foundation, that's new glass block. Underneath here Whatever is new, new windows. Okay. Inside's all drywall. And new floors, walls, wiring, and plumbing. Receipts prove the owner spent more than $30,000 fixing the house up. Again, this is what the house looked like when it was torn down. You want to show a picture here because the guy, after 30 months, went out and slapped some paint on a house. What, I'm, what I've seen in the file, I didn't have any involvement in this I, during I, the process, our people did the, their job. But the city's own people disagree about that decision to demolish. Should this house have been torn down? I guess I'd say it should not have been torn down when it was torn down, and possibly should not have been torn down at all. Steve Nome was the primary health inspector who spent months at Wright's home. Days before the demolition, in an internal email, Nome argued against the demolition. It is obvious that considerable effort has been made, Nome writes. I think it would be prudent to put the demolition on hold temporarily. I think we should consider allowing repairs to continue. The mayor's reaction? He, he uh, expressed that in an email. And that's, I mean, people, this is America. People are allowed to have their opinions. I thought it was a nice looking house. Noam says he wrote his email after he and his wife drove by the newly painted home. My wife thought it was a nice looking house. I didn't want to see the demolition. Why? Because I hate to see a house come down and I the house it, it was not a bad looking house. That kind of talk, Noam says, was not what his boss, housing administrator, Dwayne Greger, wanted to hear. It was pretty clear that my opinion really didn't matter a lot. So. Nome says Gregor took over the case, spearheading the push toward demolition. The owner says Gregor was going to get what he wanted. He pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. Until White's home was knocked over. Gregor was there for the demolition. They say you can't fight City Hall. That's a fine euphemism. I have no comment on that. Even though Nome knew the house inside and out, Gregor was the only person to testify at a key hearing. It sounds like you were cut out of the loop. Well, yeah, that's what it sounds like, I guess, yeah. Gregor told the court, it is my understanding the rough electric inspection failed last spring and that all the drywall would have to be removed so it could be properly inspected. The Akron Building Department's own records prove the house did pass every inspection, including that electrical inspection. After chasing him, I confronted Gregor with the truth. He got this. It's a good thing you don't live in Akron, then. The tone didn't get much better when I talked to the mayor. You probably don't pay taxes in Akron. But if you what did, does that have to do with doing the story? Because you're not concerned about it, then. You don't see the tax I'm doing a stop. story in Akron, sir. But I'm concerned about Akron enough to be here to do a story. If there's criticism, you want to criticize me, I would even agree. The city should have gotten done this and shouldn't have taken 30 months to do it. The mayor called us today reminding us again that Wright had 30 months to fix up the house and bring it to code and that the courts upheld the demolition order from the city. It's clear, though, the mayor is not happy with this story. By the way, it turns out Sean Wright may not be alone. We've heard from... A lot of other people in Akron who say their homes, too, were unfairly demolished. We're going to have the story from them 
this Friday at 11. Dwayne, you've got a whole lot of evidence here. You had it the other day. You think you're going to see the day soon when the mayor changes his tune on this? Well, he's been a politician, what, 31 years now? He, uh, he has dug his heels in on this issue. He feels very strongly about it, but he is paying attention. They are getting a lot of calls. Thanks. Thank Tonight's you, Chief Investigator Dwayne Pullman turns up the heat with more cases of homes that were knocked down. One person saying he got bulldozed by the city of Akron is bad enough. But three more people shot down. By who? City of Akron. Saying the city unfairly demolished their homes, too. They violated my rights. Well, that's something else. This is big. We really need some help here. Let's start with Wayne Adorney. It's insane. Adorney spent $24,000 renovating this old house near downtown Akron. He's put a lot of time and a lot of time in it to get this house done. He added a new roof, new plumbing, new hot water tank, and all new drywall. Adorney didn't know it at the time, but city records prove the health department was already placing serious citations on the home at least two years before he bought it. Adorney was fixing up the house to rent it out. How'd it work out for you? Broke, bankrupt, busted. After two and a half years, $24,000 and thousands of hours of work, the city of Akron was not satisfied, stating the house was still a nuisance. This is the neighborhood where that home was considered such a nuisance. It's been hard ever since they tore it down. In a fell swoop, they can knock them down. Lorraine Porter is well acquainted with the Akron Health Department. The city has had lots of problems with her. Five months after Porter claims she bought this house, the city issued an order to raise. The deed shows the house was transferred to a trustee, but that confused even a judge about who really owned the home. Porter, who owns other rental properties, says she spent the money here, replacing electrical wiring, building new walls, adding drywall. We had $12,000 in it. Ten months and several legal battles later, and the result was the same. The city of Akron demolished her home. City Hall is quick to point out that Porter has been involved in 27 lawsuits and has been at the center of complaints herself. She's got a long track record. Akron Mayor Don Plitzkwalik would not go on camera, but in a recorded telephone call with me and News Channel 5 News Director Lynn Hyder, the mayor spent some time talking about Porter. The general definition of a slum landlord. So they had you labeled as a slumlord of some kind? Um, not a slumlord. I don't, well, maybe. I don't know. It's like Very a nightmare. Scary. Rosemary Carrick's home was not the nicest one on the block. Far from it. The city had dealt with Rosemary many times. Neighbors did complain, and the health department obliged. This is video taken July 9, 2002, the day Rosemary's home was demolished. Everything Rosemary owned was still inside. Any things I had is gone. Including what she claims was a very expensive collection of teddy bears. She found one in the dirt the day of the demolition. The head was gone. I picked it up and it, it broke my heart. Rosemary didn't get the bears and her other possessions out because she thought she still had time. Her case was still on appeal to the Ohio Supreme Court. The court ruled against her. But look at the timestamp. That happened on August 7th, almost a month after the city had already demolished her home. They took down your home while you're still on appeal in the courts? Yes, sir. What was yes. it? What? I know it's hard to believe, but it's a fact. How in the world can you say that? The mayor told us after Carrick lost her appeal in the 9th District, the city had the legal authority to tear her house down and did. It doesn't matter whether the Supreme Court, that, that is immaterial. The mayor is not happy with our investigation, using strong words to describe the story and me. Mr. Investigative Reporter, I think you are one of the most deceitful and despicable journalists, supposed journalists that I've ever dealt with. That's high praise from a public official, sir. And strong language to describe the people we showed you tonight. You can quote me on this, they're slum landlords. But this is not about personal attacks. It's about the people of Akron and this, their homes. Homes that were crushed. We were within the letter of the law. We can't dispute that. But the mayor can't dispute this. The picture of Sean Wright's home, and now others, the day the city of Akron knocked them down. Our discussion ended in much the same way our first conversation with the mayor began.
emotional. But I got to tell you something. I've wasted enough time. It's been an interesting day again. The mayor insists he and his city followed the law and did nothing wrong. But tonight, a week after our first story aired, the question remains. Even if the law says you can knock down a home, why do it when in the end the home looks good? We'll continue following this story. Boy, Dwayne, you can really hear the frustration mm -hmm. in Mayor Pliskowalik's voice. And certainly the city does have to deal with people who move into poorer neighborhoods Absolutely. and take advantage. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the real issue here is there is nothing at the end, at the 11th hour, that can take a look at this and say, should this be torn down? Reevaluate right. the situation. Oh, I know there's the more to come. For City that. Hall, the mayor and other bureaucrats there say they did their job. So why then did our chief investigator, Dwayne Pullman, find so many other houses that neighbors say should have been torn down instead? Our now famous video <laughs> has ripped through the heart of Akron, a newly remodeled home. The nicest house on the street. Demolished by the city. All my efforts were for, were for nothing. The housing administrator certainly made no apologies. We upheld the law. Neither did the mayor, who made his city's role clear when it comes to nuisances and dangerous homes. We have some power to go knock down houses. I mean like that. If that's true, why didn't the city knock down these houses we found in Akron? If an eyesore for the whole neighborhood. All of them dilapidated and vacant. Some condemned. One ordered torn down more than a year ago. Many sit rotting in neighborhoods where people work, live, and play. Each clearly in much worse shape than the newly remodeled home the city did demolish. They'll tear somebody's house down that, that needs a home. And then leave a bunch of junk set here like this. City Hall didn't help us find these houses. Far from it. More than a month ago, we requested a list of all condemned houses in the city of Akron. Surprisingly, we were told they don't keep such a list. So we were on our own to drive the streets of Akron looking for houses like this. This charred vacant house is condemned by the city. Fire department records show last year it was torched three separate times. And the flames shooting everywhere. Scorching Reverend Joe Tillon's house next door. See all these bubbles? Yet this burned out shell of a house is still standing in a neighborhood where children play. It's not just an eyesore, it's also dangerous. So they should tear this, uh, tear this one down. They tear the others down and some of they shouldn't be tearing down. City Hall told us it can't do much about this house or other houses we found because they're in foreclosure. But housing officials, including here in the city of Cleveland, say if the house truly is a nuisance, being in foreclosure shouldn't make any difference at all. And back in Akron, we found other condemned and dilapidated homes that aren't in foreclosure, tagged with violations and condemnation orders. This house on Belvedere is not in foreclosure and is condemned. So is this one on Raymond and this one. Yet all of them are still standing. Instead of demolishing these homes where neighbors want it. Well, I'm tired looking at it because it's all messed and nobody's doing anything about it. The city of Akron demolished this home where neighbors opposed it. They knocked out a perfectly good house. Why? We asked City Hall. We got little information and a no to our repeated interview requests. So I went back to that housing administrator who bristled during our first interview. It's a good thing you don't live in Akron then. Today, he too was relatively quiet. Have a nice day. You can leave the premises. Are you practicing selective enforcement? Why would you tear down the good homes? After days of battling for the most basic of information, we still don't have a clear picture of how the city of Akron picks some homes over others. And listen to this. We just learned that that burned out home wasn't even on the city's radar for immediate demolition until we told them about it. Dwayne, it seems unconscionable that any city would allow homes to remain on the uh, list like that for so long when they're an apparent clear threat to the safety of not just kids in the neighborhood, but everybody. 
that's that's a major point because that's why the program exists and that's what the mayor and everybody said they do and that's why they tore down that good home it doesn't seem to be very clear on how how fair it is i don't think mr Greger was very happy to see you i i think that's a good safe bet we hey. seem to be dragging this out for some reason that i i know you will one day uncover we are going to stay on top of it it started early reaction to these images of sean wright's house being bulldozed <laughs> There's much more to my side of the story. That's right, hitting the airwaves with WNIR's Howie Chiswick. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. There's an order in which you perform these mm -hmm. uh, phases, and I was doing it in the correct order. And Mayor Don Plasquelic told his side to WAKR's Ray Horner. He didn't do what he said he was going to do. And, and two different court hearings. And so I said, honestly, and part of my job is to make a decision, and that... And we followed the law. And, that's and later, Sean Wright calling WNIR again. You didn't call any witnesses. Why is that? We weren't given the opportunity. Oh, but I'm sh in a court of law, everybody gets an opportunity. Well, not in that court. Then came an avalanche of callers. Well, I, I'm saying that I have to take more I callers. Respect that young man for doing what he did. All right, my friend. I want to say emails. This housing board system is in place to protect the good homeowners. From the slum landlord and the land speculators. And more callers. He should be commended. He should have been given an award instead of his house being torn down. And you're looking live now at the empty lot where that house used to stand, right about where I'm standing now here at 51 Cambridge Drive here in Akron. All you can see is just a bunch of dirt. And, of course, these uh, tracks from the bulldozer here. We also have a shot now, live picture from... News Chopper 5 of this big empty lot. And it was fascinating listening to the talk radio. We listened to several hours of it today. People calling in continually throughout the day. We got out, we talked to some people out on the street, and then we turned around, got back in the car, came over here to do this uh, live shot right now. People were still talking about it just a few minutes ago. This is definitely, guys, a story that has gotten the attention of the people here in Akron. Reporting live from Akron, Brad Harvey. News Channel 5. And I am certainly overwhelmed at how passionate people are about this. You should see, Brad, these hundreds and hundreds of emails that we've received over the last few hours. And I've been reading them through the commercial breaks. I see one says here, I think you should tear the mayor's house down. Sees what he says. All right, thanks. Brad Harvey, very interesting. Well, the buzz certainly does not stop there. Tonight at 11, Chief Investigator Dwayne Pullman shares more viewer outrage over this story. You will be amazed at what some other people are saying about what's happening. News Channel 5 meets with Akron Councilman Gary Moneypenny at this now vacant lot on Cambridge Street. It was here that Sean Wright's home was torn down after Wright made some $30,000 in improvements hoping to bring it up to code. And the man behind that decision, Akron Housing Administrator Dwayne Greger, initially runs from News Channel 5 investigator Dwayne Pullman, who was looking for answers as to why that home had to be taken down. The house was a lot different on the day we tore it down than it was the day it was court ordered to be torn down. Councilman Moneypenny admits Wright Wright's home had undergone significant improvements, especially in the 11 days prior to its demolition. But he says Wright should have contacted him earlier. Taken 30 months before I ever received a call on this issue. He should have called you earlier? Had he called me earlier, who knows, that maybe I could have looked into something. Now, the councilman does not believe housing administrator That's Dwayne Greger saying. made a mistake, but he believes council should have the ability to examine situations like Wright's home. So this doesn't happen again. There, there probably are members of city council that wish that maybe we had a way to step in if we get a last minute call, as I did in this case, get a last minute call and said something's a muck here or something's running wrong, that we could step in and maybe say, hold off, let us take a look at this. And you're looking at a live picture from Mass Cam 5 to give you an overview of this now vacant lot where Sean Wright's home once stood. It's still not clear if Akron City Council will once again put that legislation up for a vote that would allow council the ability to have a say so in demolitions like this one right here. They tried it three years ago when the city council president brought up the measure, but unfortunately that issue failed. Now, Sean Wright is considering a lawsuit, meanwhile, against the city for some $30,000 in damages. Reporting live from the city of Akron, Joe Paganakis, News Channel 5. Joe, thank you very much. And of course, the story does not end there. Hundreds of people are expressing outrage over what has happened in the city of Akron, and some of them tell us they were also bulldozed by... 
The city of Akron destroyed a newly remodeled home that neighbors say was the best on the block. I chased down the bureaucrat who led the charge to tear it down. Finally, I got an interview that can only be described as unbelievable. I have very little confidence in you, sir. Well, it's a good thing you don't live in Akron, then. I agree. Because I wouldn't want to be under your leadership. Very good. No question, our investigation touched a nerve. Since our story aired, we've received dozens of emotionally charged emails. Mr. and Mrs. H write, we are embarrassed that as taxpayers, we paid the city to tear down a perfectly good home for no apparent reason. T writes, that was one of the most outrageous cases of bureaucracy run amok that I have ever seen. JM simply writes, what a shame. CD says, I was fuming at the arrogance of that Gregor guy and how he thought nothing of tearing that house down. RR asks, how did this guy get hired? K got really worked up about the city managers responsible, calling them enduring, despotic, self-deluded, goose-stepping, ruling class of cronyistic bureaucrats. Don't let them sweep this one under the rug. SF says, can't wait for your next story on this. Well, you don't have to wait long. On Wednesday at 11, the inspector who tried to stop the demolition talked. And I take the case to the mayor of Akron. You're not going to believe what he has to say. The demolition, the outrage, and the showdown continue. Don't miss News Channel 5 at 11 all this week. I'm Chief Investigator Dwayne Pullman, on your side. Okay, thank you, Dwayne.